Number two says, from what you've learned so far about reconstruction, do you think it's been good or bad for the African Americans? So far, from what we've learned so far, has it been a good experience or a bad experience for the African Americans? And I want you to take your best guess. Explain to me why you think that, OK? Yes. Same learning target as uh, Wednesday, yeah. OK, can I get you two to switch with you two? Thank you. So I want you two guys to switch because you're afraid about being on the video, so they said to switch you guys. So you two. Monique, you want to stay right there? Or are you going to move? No, okay, thank you. You're fine. Okay, stampers. Ale is here. When you're ready, go ahead and start stamping for the do now. Let me see if I can get you guys to be in partners, too. Could be in there's, no, there's no homework to stamp for today. So, oh, that's fine. You guys can be partners, that's fine with me. Um, the second question says, from what you've learned so far about reconstruction, right? Has it been helpful or not helpful for African Americans? So you can say both. You can explain to me why it's been both helpful and not helpful. By the end of class today, you need to have your mind made up. But for right now, you can say both. So what do you think the country was like after the Civil War? Do you think it was all like perfect, or do you think they had to do some work? They had to do some work. So that's what this is, is like rebuilding. So to reconstruct would be to like refill. So they're rebuilding the country back together. You're going to have to get some more pitch cut up on here. Sorry. So we're going to go over the do now and then go over the agenda for the day. So let's start with the Reconstruction Era. What is this era? Remember we said was a time period. So what is this time period? Juan Carlos. OK, I could barely hear you. Can say that one more time? Tell me in your own words. What was going on? This is after what big event? The Civil War. And what are they trying to do during the Civil War? OK, rebuild the South. So let's start with there. Number one, they're trying to rebuild the South. Esmeralda, tell me another thing they're trying to do right now. Bring the country back together. Country back together. <laughs> Got caught on video there. All right, uh, what's the last thing they're trying to do? What particular population have we been studying? 
And what are they trying to do for those people? Ale, what are they trying to do for a, pr what group of people have we been talking about? Okay, and what group of people have you guys been determining whether they have more rights or less rights? Freed slaves. The freed slaves. So what were they trying to do for the freed slaves during Reconstruction? Give them more rights. Okay, so give the freed slaves more rights and freedom. <laughs> and schools and things like that. Nice job. All right, so here's the Reconstruction era. We've been talking about whether these people, these newly freed slaves, whether they ended up taking steps forward, right? Whether they got more rights or they're taking steps backwards towards having less rights. And we've been talking about events that made them move forward and backwards. I asked you guys to tell me whether you think they've moved more forwards or more backwards. So let's just make a chart here to figure out which ones have been steps forward and which ones have been steps backwards. You wanna start us off? Yeah. Okay, so tell me a positive. What's been a positive thing that's happened? is that they got the right to vote. Okay, what amendment was that? Do you remember? The 13th amendment, I mean the 14th. Free people oh. vote. So that's what we actually haven't talked about. So which one would that be? 15th. The 15th. Oh. Right, so we're going to talk about that one today. But that was a good, a good step ahead for us. Abraham, what's something else that has been positive for them? They get, um, they're giving them supplies, food, home. Nice job. What what group was that called? Do you remember who those people were who came down to do that? Does anybody remember the name of the group that came in to do that, to give them food and homes and supplies? Sure. Mm, that's not quite right. Who, anybody? The Freedmen. Does anybody remember this? Bureau. Nice job. I heard somebody say it here. So we've got the Freedmen's Bureau giving them the things that they need to be able to be free. What's another positive thing? Besides the 15th Amendment, what other amendments were passed that gave them things that they needed? Go for it, Stage Janae. The 14th Amendment. Gave, made them what? It made them um, be citizens. Nice job. Citizenship. Okay, and what about the 13th, Stage Janae? It um, freed the slaves. Nice job. So freedom was the 13th. So they've got a bunch totally. of things going good here. There are a few things that we talked about that are pretty bad, though. What were the things that did not help them out? Joel, what was one of the things we talked about that was not good for them? Uh, on what? From, for the African Americans. What was one of the things that happened to them that like hurt them, actually made them go backwards rather than help them move forwards? Um. Do you remember any of the laws that they made to help them or that hurt them? No. No, who wants to help them out? Ali, I saw your hand. Share copy. Okay, tell me about sharecropping. Why is that bad? Because it made them kind of like slaves. They were still controlled by their former masters. Why were they controlled by their former masters? Because they borrowed stuff they didn't have. And they they borrowed. Pay it back. And so then what did that lead into, essentially? Debt. Debt. Yeah, nice job. So sharecropping led into debt or to poverty. Okay. And who else have I not heard from? Tiara, do you think, can you think of another thing that was bad for them? What else did they do that was not so good? Black yeah, tell me about those. Um, when they couldn't go to, they like segregation. It was like segregation, right? They separated them. These were laws that removed their rights. Nice job. So what are we going to do today? We're going to look more at the things that moved them forward and at the things that moved them back. And in fact, we're going to get all the way to the end of Reconstruction, to the very end. What happened to finally end it? And where on this spectrum in our classroom, between having lots of rights or having no rights, did the African Americans end up? Okay, so really quickly, I know these guys are blocking the agenda. I'll just go through it real fast. We're gonna go through our last two pages of notes by looking at some pictures and then doing the PowerPoints and getting some pages of notes. After that, we are going to do a cold call review really fast to make sure we know all the facts. Then you guys are going to revisit those hypotheses that you hypotheses that you made at the very beginning of Tuesday's class. And you're going to decide whether or not you think those hypotheses are true today or are not true. Okay? And you're going to write a paragraph about why you think it's true or not true. And then we're going to do one final activity as the exit path and then we'll be done and it's Friday afternoon. So what I need you to have on your desk right now are your notes from Reconstruction, so the ones where the guy's moving forward and backwards, and your hypothesis sheet. I want both of those two things out. Yeah. I think one of those very good is the case paper. 
It's okay. Do you need this? And this? Do you need these two things or you have them? Yep, that and the hypothesis sheet. All right. So. Yes, ma'am. Okay, give me one second. And you were absent too, huh? Okay, so you should be looking at phase three. It looks like this. All right, so give me one second, Monique. I'll get it to you. What I want you guys to do right now is I want you to look at this space that I'm pointing to. Does everybody see where I'm pointing? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to put up a picture. And in this space right here, this blank space, I want you guys to write down one thing from this picture that you find surprising or interesting or just an observation about what you see going on in this picture. Okay, so if you need to stand up, I can move it back. If you need to stand up and look closer, you can. And I'm going to tell you this, okay? I'm going to tell you that this was an advertisement that was made for people to try to pass the 15th Amendment. So I want you to write down one observation that you can see from this picture. No, I can, is it, can I do it like that? Is that okay? Okay, let's do that then. So write down one observation that you see in that picture, right where I pointed, in that blank space next to the event bank. I'm gonna give you guys about 30 more seconds to do that. One thing you see in that picture that's surprising or interesting or different for you. So write that down. That's kind of surprising, right? That's like the same rights as white people. Okay, write it down. Okay. I want you to turn to your partner. This is going to be interesting because we need to move a few people around. We're going to do that right now so that everybody has a partner. Uh, Stage and A, I'm going to have you go ahead and move back next to Nyla for me, please. Uh, Javier, I would like for you to move up right next to Alondra for me, please, so that you guys have a partner. And Ricardo, I'll come be your partner up there, okay? I want you to turn to your partner right now and I want you to share with them what you wrote down. So just go ahead and share what you wrote down with your partner right now. One, the one thing that was surprising or interesting. Yeah, that's fine. So share with your partner. You guys got it? Cool. You guys share what you write down? That was surprising. Oh, over here. That is dressing like what? Using a very good. Like fancy. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, zero. So we got a little bit of an argument going on over here. Zenia, what do you see? They're all African American. They're all African American. What are they doing, though, Gerardo? They're getting married. Some of them are getting married. So if you look right here, we've got people getting married. Uh, Juan, what else do you see going on here? They're marching. <laughs> They're what? Marching. There's away. like a parade or some sort of marching happening here. Mufasa, what do you see? That most of them are free. Okay, why do you think that, that they're free? That's a really good observation. Tell because me why. Because there are no owners around them. There's no white people telling them what to do. There's no owners around them. Okay, Javier, what do you see? How are they dressed? They're dressing good. They're dressing good. They're dressing all fancy. <laughs> Maria, what's going on? A over here. What's happening with this guy? Can you see him? There's a guy standing in front, and he's holding a sword like this, and he's got people behind him. What do you think he's doing? You know, does somebody want to help her out? What do you guys think this guy right here is? What's happening with him? Yeah? Defending the African-Americans. Okay, maybe he's defending the African-Americans. I heard here he's a soldier. This is like he's leading soldiers. So we've got an African-American like commander here, leading soldiers, maybe into war or maybe just training them. We've got an African-American here who looks like he might be a priest. 
We've got some African Americans here who look like they're studying potentially in like a college. A teacher over here. Up here we've got people like uh, Javier said who are dressed really, really nicely. Does this picture show a step forward or a step backward for African Americans? Forward. forward, right? So this is the 15th Amendment, right? This is showing us, this is an ad for people to pass the 15th Amendment. And uh, Diego already told us that the 15th Amendment is their right to vote. So what are they saying? With the right to vote, what's gonna happen to African Americans, are they saying in the South? Somebody put those two things together. With the right to vote, what would happen? Yes? Uh, they get to do like, like almost everything everybody could do. They get all their rights, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I want you to keep this in mind as we go through the next section. Let me really quickly review what we're gonna do before I set up the PowerPoint here. So, as a reminder, each event that we do, you're gonna put a plus or a minus next to. If it's a positive event, you put a plus. If it's negative, you put a minus. At the end, we will summarize together what those events were, and then you're gonna have to rank. Where are they? Are they all the way up? as far as being equal to white people at this point, or are they way far back and they don't have very many rights? Okay, you've got about 30 seconds while I set this up. Make sure you've got your notes out and ready. Amendment. So I want you guys to look up here, please. As soon as I can get this all the way up. We're going to have to try to bear with it, not the lights not being out. It'll get brighter here in a second, though. I think they'll be okay. All right. So, 15th Amendment. What's going on here? Let's look up at the front. We know that 13, 14, and 15, I gave you guys a hint on Wednesday. Does anybody remember what that hint was that I gave you? Yeah, what was it? Free people vote. Free people vote. So the 13th then, David, did what? They let them be free. They made them free. And the 14th then did what? What, what did people represent? Citizenship. Citizenship. And so 15th is the voting. I want you guys to look at the second bullet down, though. That's exactly what it says in our Constitution. It says that a citizen's right to vote shall not be denied. What does to deny something mean? To reject or to not allow something, right? So a citizen's right to vote shall not be not allowed or not be taken away on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. What might previous condition of servitude mean? Yeah, Abraham. Being a slave. Being a slave, right? So if they used to be a slave, they're not, they, that, that can't be a reason why they can't vote. Does it say anything in here about gender, whether you're male or female, though? No. No. Which means they kept the right to vote still from females. So females of any race weren't allowed to vote. But this did give African American men the right to vote. It also gave African, not excuse me, African American, men of other races who were citizens. So that means those people who lived in California that used to be Mexico, and then after the Mexican-American War, they became America, they became citizens, now those men were allowed to vote too. They couldn't inhibit, they couldn't not allow them to vote. Or people who maybe immigrated into the country from other places and became citizens. If they were a male, they were allowed to vote. Females, though, still had no right to vote. Okay, so next to the 15th Amendment, should we put a plus or a minus? What do you think? Is this a good thing or a bad thing for African Americans? It's a good thing. It's a good thing, so put a plus. Put a plus, okay. So what happens next? This is kind of cool, and this is where that picture that we just saw comes in, okay? They had to register all these voters, and after they registered all these new African-American voters, they uh, decided to create some new government, and, and here's why. Do you guys remember how I told you that the military from the north came down to the south and took over, they set up those districts? You guys remember us talking about that, that they came in? When they came in and set up those new military districts, they also punished the former slave owners. And their punishment was taking away those people's right to vote. So the people who used to own slaves, kind of like the white people who were pretty racist at the time, 
they lost their right to vote. So now that we have these slave owners over here who can't vote anymore, and the African American men who can vote, who ends up having more power? Yeah, the African American men. And so they create these new constitutions, these new governments in the South that are fabulous, right? They give them the right to be judges or to be military leaders or to be uh, in the army or to be in the Congress in some way to make laws, right? They make sure that there's money to build schools, to build roads. They make sure that if somebody doesn't pay a debt that they can't go to prison for that. So they do all these things to help the African American populations and those white Southerners who used to own slaves, who made all those black coats, now they're gone because they can't vote. They have no rights. So any of those black codes that used to exist also get overturned. So this is a, a good time. That's what that picture was showing. This is a really good time for African Americans. They have a lot of leadership, a lot of support, a lot of people who are in the government trying to help them out. So should we put a plus or a minus next to these new state governments? Plus. 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 So get a plus down there. Okay, the last thing that's pretty cool is that not only was this new government helping them, but they were the new government. African Americans started running for office. And because none of the former slave owners, these racist guys, could vote, these African Americans won. They would win all these offices. So they now were the people who are making laws. They are the people who are in control. And so they're making sure that their rights are protected and that they can keep moving forward rather than moving back. And so up here it gives you some facts. One in five, so one in every five people who were in the government in the South at the time was an African American. And 22 of the people who were in the United States government, so in Washington, D.C., they were African American. So they had all these people making sure that their rights are protected. So is this a plus or a minus, having people in office? Yes. Plus, so why don't we write that down? And let's write down, do a quick summary here to make sure that we've got all the right facts. No bad things. No bad things, right? So think about that, because you're about to stand up in a second and put yourself in the right position. So, Alondra, did you, what do we have? Plus, for all three of these, what are they? Are they all pluses? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's summarize these. Danae. Why is the 15th Amendment a good thing? Because what did it give the right to do? Vote. To vote. Why is it good for them to have the right to vote? So that they can Can't hear you. So that they can what? <laughs> vote on things they think is good. Things are good. And what else are those things going to do? The things that are good, are they going to help that their population uh -huh. or it's not? It's going to help their population. Okay, so let's write that down to start with. 15th Amendment. Gave them the vote so they could make laws that supported. Right, so they're making laws that are going to help them, that are going to support them. All right, so the 15th Amendment gives them this vote. So now they have the ability to make these laws. Not only that, but then the white Southerners who used to own slaves, they've lost the vote. So why are these new governments so good? Why, is it, why are these new governments that they create so helpful? What do these new governments do? Who thinks they can tell me? What are the new governments doing that are so good? Make sure the black. Take your hand away from your mouth and tell me. Make sure the African Americans have their rights. Have their rights, so they're making sure their rights aren't violated. What else are they allowing them to do? What all of a sudden could they do that they can't they couldn't do before? Make the laws actually serve an office. So let's write that down. That kind of gets both of these. So the new state government make sure I'm gonna put AA for African Americans. African Americans Rights aren't violated. So that it keeps, it protects their rights. And they get to make laws themselves because they're in office.
when you're done writing that, I want you guys to go down to the ladder at the bottom. And you need to decide where you would put the African Americans after just these events. Are they all the way in the front where they have full citizenship? They're almost exactly the same as the whites. Or are they in the back where they don't have any rights at all? Okay, so I want you to put the X, and then when I say so, we're going to stand up and actually make the spectrum itself. So put the X where you think it goes. Turn it off for me. Okay. So put the X on there, and I'm going to have you guys stand up in about 15 seconds. So make sure you know where you want to go. Do they have full citizenship? They're equal to the whites at this point? Or are they all the way in the back and limited citizenship? Some of them, yes. Some of them are still very, very, very poor. Okay, so go ahead, stand up. We're going to just do this aisle so we don't get in the way of the cameras. And I want you guys, if you think same as whites, I want you all the way in the front. If you think not equal, I want you in the back. And make sure you know why you are where you are. So I'm going to call on some of you to share. Stand up and where you are. All right. You got three seconds to be where you want to finally be because I'm going to call on you. Three. Two, one, zero. Are you girls trying to get farther up? No. Okay, can you let them move by so that we can get everybody where they want to be? Okay, starting over here. One, why are you all the way up front? Because they are making laws now. They're making laws now. So that's like what the, essentially what white people can do too? Yeah. So it's like full citizenship? Nice. Tier, why are you a little bit farther back? Because there's not enough room. Is there any group of people who you think African Americans who don't have all the same rights? Hmm? Is there a part of the African American population that doesn't have the same rights? Who didn't have the things that every that the other people did? Hmm. No. Can anybody think of who I might be referencing? Black who did not who did not have all those same rights? Who did not have the right to vote at this time? White the Some of the whites. Okay, so tell me why you're there, Sage and I. Because the whites didn't have the right to vote because they got their privilege taken away. Okay, so why does that make you halfway in between? Because they, um... Mm. Who else doesn't have the right to vote at this time? Women. Oh, yeah, women. Women, right? So that kind of moves you a little bit farther back. Everybody's not, so not all African Americans are equal to whites. I guess white women didn't have the right to vote either. But look how far up you guys are. I want you to notice right now how far up you are. And I want you to keep that in mind when we go through the next round, okay? Because we're gonna do this one more time. So go back to your seats. I have one more picture for us to look at before we look at our last set of notes here. Potentially yeah. because they're poor. Abraham, what do you think? Tell me why you think that. Because uh, white people hated African Americans. Okay, so what do you they think they've done? They killed them. They've killed them. So there's people on the bottom who have ki are been killed. Okay, Danae? It looks like some of them people just been attacked. Okay, like there's been an attack. Can you tell me why you think that? Because it's like them people on the ground dead, and then this man just looking like he was like attacked, but he didn't get killed. He looks pretty he like looks upset, like asking right? Asking why? Or something. Yeah. Okay. Asking why? Yes. Isn't it? It looked like that man on top, like it looked like he like like he begging like like he need like he needed the money from the um the uh, people who was giving him the money or whatever, the farmers. The Freedmen's Bureau? Yeah. Okay, so potentially these people have died because they're poor and that guy's saying like, help me, help me. Okay, 
Yeah, Mufasa, what do you see going on? Um, I think people came and killed them because in the back it says the white liners was here. Yeah, it says white liners were here. Very, very lightly back up here. It shows that it says the white liners were here. Mufasa, why might white people have killed these African Americans? Think about what we just learned. Why might the white people be so angry that they would kill them? Because they don't have the same rights as African Americans. Because who has more power at this point? Black. Black. The African Americans have more power than their former owners. So they use violence. So keep this in mind. We're going to go on to the next slide right now. Okay, so be on the very last page. It says phase four on it. And we're going to talk about this first group of people. Sneaking in at night to try to terrorize the families. 
And this is all to keep them from being able to vote, from being able to run for office. Okay? Now, Diego asked a good question. He said, well, what are they going to do about it, right? Let's, before we do that, should we put a plus or a minus next to Ku Klux Klan? Minus. A minus. So put a minus there. And the government did try to do something. And that's what the enforcement acts are. That's the next event. Okay? So the enforcement acts. This is when the government says, you know what, this is enough. We've got to stop this. They can't be acting this way. This is not legal. It's not legal to murder people. It's not legal to prevent people from running for office or voting. So they pass these laws. They're called the Enforcement Acts. They are trying to enforce people to, to behave, to do the right thing. And they say that it's illegal to use violence to keep somebody from voting. Okay. So what happens is they end up arresting a lot of members of the Ku Klux Klan. But when they get to court, I want you to imagine this, right? You're at a court scene, and they're trying to convict this guy of murder. They're saying, this guy, everybody saw him. Everybody saw him murder this African American who was trying to vote. But when they call the witnesses to the stand, no witness is willing to say he did it. Why do you think they're not willing to say he did it? Yeah, right? Because that witness, he said, because he's afraid someone's going to kill him. Because that witness, if he says, yeah, I saw him do it, guess who's coming after him now? The everybody else. Yeah, the Ku Klux Klan. They're going to come after him. So even though they made these laws, these laws didn't help much because everybody was scared of them. They had so much power. They used so much violence that people didn't really want to convict them. They didn't really want to put them in jail because they were afraid of what was going to happen to them and to their families. So should we put a plus or a minus next to enforcement acts? What do you guys think? A minus? It was an attempt at a plus, but it ended up more as a minus. So you guys can put it, it's up to you. You can put both, you can put a minus. Okay. So, sure, go for it. Because it was at least to try to step forward. Two more things that happened that are super important, okay? What happens next is called the Amnesty Act. And what was happening was that this is all the North. The North has sent the military down to the South. The North has sent money and soldiers and all these people down to the South to try to help, right? So the North is getting kind of tired of it. And they're saying, why can't they just take care of themselves? African Americans are in office. They're free. They're citizens. They have the right to vote. Can't we just let them take care of themselves? So they pass a new law called the Amnesty Act. And does anybody know what the word amnesty means? Okay, I'm going to give you an example here. Let's say Xenia stole my computer. And then she felt really, really bad about it. And so she brought it back to me. Okay? I could grant her amnesty. I would say, it's okay. You know, I, I, I forgive you. What do you think amnesty might mean? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. That's exactly what it means. Who do you think they would be forgiving if the North is like, we're tired of dealing with it? Who are they going to ultimately forgive? The South. Who in the South? White. The white people, the slave owners. If you look at this picture here, what's this guy doing? He's voting. The Amnesty Act, they forgave these white Southerners, and they gave these former slave owners, the Confederates, the right to vote again. What happens if the white slave owners get the right to vote again? Say that again, Mufasa? They're going to take over, right? The black codes come back all right, all, like right away, right? African Americans get voted out of office right away. The African Americans start losing all their power, and they, they bring back segregation. And, and money that was going to African American schools stops going to those schools because these people end up with the power again. And that's what the Amnesty Act is. It forgives them and gives them the power to vote. Do they stop killing black people? No. No, and we're going to actually look at why not still. So should we put a plus or a minus? Minus. minus. Put a minus, and we're going to look at the last one for today. <laughs> last one. Okay? And the last one is the event that ends this, the Reconstruction era completely. And it ends in almost in the same way that the Civil War started. Okay? So in the year 1876, just like in 1860, they had to elect a new president. Right? And they had two people running for president. A guy from the North who was very much like Lincoln. He was against like slavery. He wanted to support equality, right? His name was Rutherford B. Hayes. Then we have a guy in the South who 
says he's against slavery, but wasn't really for equality, didn't really want to support the, the new African Americans who had been uh, freed, right? So we've got these two people running against each other, and the race is very, very close. So close, in fact, that they have to get a group of people together to like recount the votes, to figure out who won. And when they figure out that the guy from the North won, how do you think the South is going to feel? Yeah. Bad, right? What happened last time when Lincoln won? They killed him. They killed him, but what did they do first? They seceded. They started the Civil War. The South threatens again. They say, we're not, he's not our president. We're not going to listen to this guy. We're going to secede. We're going to separate. We're going to make our own country yeah. again and fight. Right? So the North is scared. They're like, oh, no, we can't have another war. We can't handle this again. So they come up with a compromise. Remember, a compromise is where both sides give in a little bit. Okay? And in this compromise, the final solution was this, that he could be president. The Northern guy, Rutherford B. Hayes, could be president. But the South got complete control again. The South got to take over their lands. The North left. All the military left. The Freedmen's Bureau left. Everybody left. How do you think that's going to help the African Americans? Is that going to be good or bad for them? Yeah. Bad. So let's put a minus, and I'm going to show you that picture really big here, because I think this really makes the point clear. It's not so good, right? All right, so I want you guys to look at this. Because this is almost just like the compromise. It is essentially the compromise com compromise of 1877. Here's what I want you to think, OK? This guy right here, he's the north. He's a northern soldier. He was one of the people who came down to help the African Americans and to help make everything OK, right? Who's this guy right here? So is he going to help African Americans, or is he against them? Yeah. yeah, so this is like a former slave owner. What is going on right here? They're shaking hands. What does to shake hands mean? To agree. To agree, to compromise. What this is, is that they're handing over power. Who are they handing the power over to? They're handing the power to the slaves? The to the KKK, right? So this is why this is so terrible. These people were down there. They were helping the African Americans. You know, steps forward and back, but they were at least helping. Now, because of this, they've handed all this power over to, essentially, the KKK. People who do not like African Americans, who do not want them to have equality. What's happening? What's the effect of this handshake? What's going on under this? I see terrorizing one. What do you see particularly happening here? Show me, give me an observation. What do you see in this, this bottom part? They're scared. Part? They're scared. Okay, Ensilvania, what do you see going on? Mm, yeah, yeah, they're scared. That they're scared. They're huddling in fear. Does anybody see what's going right here? There's a guy who's been hung on the tree, right? He's been murdered. Right here, we have a schoolhouse that's been burned, right? So what are they saying about this compromise? Is this good for African Americans or not good? Yeah.